Does the age at which you're diagnosed with MS matter as far as long-term prognosis? I'm gonna answer that question starting right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Georgia asks the following question. Hello, I was wondering, is the outcome of PPMS generally worse if you're diagnosed in your early 20s as opposed to later in life? It seems all the cases I have read when diagnosed so early are much worse. Georgia, thank you for your participation in the channel. Thank you for that great question. The first order of business is a point of clarification. When we talk about the onset of multiple sclerosis, it's most accurate to link the onset to symptom onset when you first started to have neurological symptoms, which ultimately led to being diagnosed. Now, as you know, there can sometimes be quite a gap between when those symptoms first occurred and when the person was diagnosed. And so to be accurate in our discussion, we want to start with symptom onset, not date of diagnosis. When you look at the medical literature, people diagnosed with symptom onset of multiple sclerosis, either type of multiple sclerosis, whether that be primary progressive or relapsing or remitting, who have onset of symptoms after the age of 40 tend to have a faster disease progression compared to people that were diagnosed before the age of 40. And so the first point here is, generally speaking, being diagnosed younger is actually a better prognostic factor, but there's a catch. If you are diagnosed younger, you have more time to accrue neurological disability. And so someone who is diagnosed very young might have a slower progression of disease, but end up disabled at a younger chronologic age. This is most evident when you talk about pediatric onset multiple sclerosis. Someone who is diagnosed with MS as a preteen, let's say, prognostically the age is actually in their favor, but they're getting diagnosed at age 12. And so we now have decades in front of them. They may end up neurologically disabled at a younger chronologic age, even though it took them longer to get there. So do I look at primary progressive MS and say symptom onset at 20 is a worse prognostic factor? I don't, but I do keep in mind this fact that there's more time to accrue neurological disability. The last point that I wanna make is when we talk about prognostication and risk factors, there are certain things that we can impact and certain things we can't impact. You can't impact your age of onset. You can't impact your gender or your ethnicity. And these are non-modifiable risk factors. So if you're a guy, you can't not be a guy. And being a guy is an independent risk factor for worsening disease course. The same thing as symptom onset at a given age. There are, however, modifiable things that we can do. Avoiding morbid obesity and staying physically active, embracing exercise as part of your lifestyle, that's a modifiable risk factor which can help slow progression of disease in my strong opinion. Supplementing low levels of vitamin D to drive the level up into a normal range is another modifiable risk factor. Not smoking tobacco. Tobacco smoking is the largest modifiable risk factor and taking a disease-modifying therapy can modify the disease. These are things that are in your control. And so, whereas I love teaching people information about MS, the take-home here isn't, oh, woe is me if I was diagnosed after 40. That's just a risk factor. The take-home is we want to identify modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors and spend our time over here trying to make them better. My name's Aaron Boster, and thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next video or my next live stream or the next time I see you in clinic, take care.